Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about residences. I'm sure you've seen and heard this term many times. We're going to apply it to uh, room acoustics. And residences in room acoustics are just simply one thing, air excitation, air movement, molecular movement. It's the waves from our low frequency energy as an example that won't fit into our rooms. When they don't fit, they cause the air in the dimensions that they don't fit to start moving, okay? And this is where you get what we all have heard people say, bass boom. So this is all about energy not fitting in our box, okay? And what we have to remember about our box or our room is that the energy is cyclic. It keeps moving. So if we have a problem here, we're going to have another problem here, another problem here, and another problem here. That's why dimensions in a room are so critical, because we know the energy is cycling through the room and going to produce all kinds of resonances within those spaces. Where are they going to be in the room? It's going to depend on how much energy we have in the room. It's going to depend on the dimensions. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to depend on the dimensions of the room. It's going to depend on a lot of variables that we have to look at first before we build, and then if we're retrofitting on an existing room, we may have to add a lot more treatment to uh, counteract the, the problems of it. So, residences produce distortion. And you can see in this graphic, as we move through these pockets of molecular movement, if you will, that um, molecular velocity, there's a better term. As we move through this, our direct energy from our sources begins to pick up and collect um, artifacts and distortion, kind of like a lint brush that you run over your shirt. It picks up things that you don't want, and then you tear it off and get rid of it. Well, we can't do that in room acoustics, see? Because everything is contained in our box. So we want to make sure that when we design for particular usage and sources, that we match room size and volume it's so critical. I, I just can't say enough about that. And then we real have to realize that residences are distortion and we have to treat those residences. So remember, all the energy in our room, in any audio room, is always a balance between direct energy from source and the reflected energy of our room. So we have source and room, and those two have to work together, okay? Those two variables are married and they have to get along. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, just like with people. So the bottom line here is we have to come up with solutions that make it work most of the time. And then we kind of have to work around the other issues. So that's how it works in small rooms. And we have to always, always be concerned with the balance between the direct and the reflected energy and the residences. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.